We're here to unveil the next marker on the Civil Rights Trail. And this one's kind of special because it's here in a military installation um, where these gentlemen fought uh, for our country uh, with General Patton. And um, I've learned so much about this trail. Uh, this platoon here went on to Texas where a little known uh, Jackie Robinson was a member, later became the great Jack. Jackie Robinson. And uh, to know all this history started here in Louisiana uh, as a part of the civil rights movement is pretty special. And this is just another marker on that trail that people will be able to travel around Louisiana and learn about those local heroes uh, that had a part of that movement. These uh, black gentlemen that formed this platoon, that fought under Patton uh, for our country, uh, at a time when it wasn't wasn't done. So I think uh, to be the first to step out there and to serve proudly as they did, we're just glad to be able to recognize them and their families here today and put this marker uh, that people will all know the story. And then to see that trail head into Texas where Jackie Robinson joined, uh, who later became the first black great baseball player in history uh, just adds a little bit more flavor to uh, this incredible story of the Civil Rights Trail through Louisiana. Good morning everyone and welcome to the Louisiana Maneuvers and Military Museum here in Pineville, Louisiana on this beautiful February day. My name is Norman Robinson. I am your lovely and talented Master of Service. Thank you for joining us today for the unveiling of the 761st Tank Battalion Louisiana Civil Rights Trail Marker. To the elected officials who are here today, we'd like to say to you, welcome. A special shout out to State Rep Ed Larvade, whom you will be hearing from later. I'm especially proud to stand here today at this ceremony of important endeavor, it's an endeavor from the vision of Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser and the Louisiana Office of Tourism. I was involved in this effort from the very beginning some three years ago. To get a it is a real honor to be here today, and I didn't know we had these fancy masks in the bags, uh, but uh, I want to thank uh, Major General, thank you and your team for, for hosting us and for allowing us to, to put this incredible marker here. This is, this is a special marker because it honors not only someone or a team from the civil rights movement, but also those that fought for this country. And many of you that know me know how I feel about our veterans, our National Guard, and those men and women that sacrifice so much. So it just adds a little something extra. This trail and the team that, that put it together, Sharon on our staff, Glenda and Ernest who put this whole thing together, uh, designed, her son designed these incredible markers, um, and so many people worked so long and hard on this project. And I'm just so honored that we were able to do it while members of the families and those that lived it are still with us to share. Dr. Jones, that uh, 17 days out of law school, filed that suit in Baton Rouge for the bus boycott. To see him, see his name on that marker with tears running down his face. And yesterday in New Orleans, to hear the stories from the lady who lived it, that she thought it was a parade because she saw police on horseback and her mama said, oh no, honey, this is no parade. Keep your head down, as she was led into that school. To see her honored uh, is incredible. So we are thankful that those people are still with us. Um, I want to thank um, Representative Ed for, for being here with us today. He's going to say it in a few words, but Senator Jay Morris and, and Representative Mike Johnson wanted me to say they couldn't be here. They're in Baton Rouge. And then also Julia Ledlow has some staff members here. Uh, representing her office. I want to thank them for being here. And Jack Hatton with the uh, NAACP, thank you for, for being here. We, um, we have a long way to go. 
This is, I think, the sixth or seventh marker. We've identified 15 um, that will be the first markers around the state, and then there will be many more to follow. But I, I, I'll close with two things. One is some people early on had a problem with this highlighting the tourism aspect of the Civil Rights Trail that will connect with all the southern states. So we thought about that. And uh, we're gonna do the same thing we did with Uniquely Louisiana and Homework Louisiana, two programs that was approved by the school to go into the schools that they can download uh, to learn about unique things in Louisiana and help kids with homework. So we're gonna create an educational plan with this video, with these interviews, with all the things that happened around Louisiana. So we'll be able to learn this in school or at home and it'll, it'll live on for many, many years. And my staff, with the great research they did, um, gave me this uh, little bit about this particular uh, team out of, uh, out of uh, this base, that when they were moved to Texas, uh, the 70, uh, 761st, there was a little known gentleman that joined them, Jackie Robinson. And um, we all know turned out to be one of the greatest baseball players ever and the first black major league player. So that adds just a little extra history and um, makes it a little special that he joined this team here as they fought under Patton for this country. Um, thank you again for being a part of this. Thank all of you for your efforts to make this happen. Uh, this is another special day and we also just recently learned that we had nine of our sites added to the National uh, Civil Rights Trail. Uh, pretty special when we started this journey. When we started this journey, there was only one um, recognized in New Orleans. And now this journey will be all over the state and touch a lot of communities that really could use the economic help as well. So we're excited today. Thank you again. God bless you. Thank you, my friend. And now to set the tone for the significance of this historical moment, I entreat you to direct your attention to the video screen. Well, if you observe uh, what's going on uh, and try to figure out how, pe how people are thinking and determine the, 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 the times of your day, I think you can always write something with that the people will understand. I was born by the river In a little tent Oh, just like that river I've been running I remember before we walked out the door, my mother said, um, when you get in the car, you sit to the back of the seat and do not put your face out the window. I can always remember that. We came in from the rear of the building. I could hear the noise. I couldn't understand what they were saying. Um, I saw police on horseback holding the crowd back. And the only thing I could think of was a parade was coming. I wanted to know why I had to go to school on Mardi Gras and everybody else got to watch the parade. My mama said, no, I wasn't the case. Hey, I don't know what's up there. A white person got on a bus, get on that bus at the front of the bus by the driver, and sat on one of those up, up on the front seat. You had to go to the back of the bus. You couldn't sit in the front seat of the bus. The black people changed their way of doing things. And that's how you bring about a change. Do you understand? Hard living. But I'm afraid to die. Yeah. The law prohibited integrated groups from meeting together and eating together. So they went down to Dookie Chase and Leah uh, welcomed them and said, Come on in. Come on in. Let's go up 
to this private room where you can continue your meeting and I will bring you some good Creole food. It was historic. History was made in that room. I go to my... The Liberation March is now on its third day. 30 miles covered, 75 miles to go. It was uh, 105 miles for 10 days. And it wasn't easy. But it also was a march to, um, to let the nation know that we were not afraid, that this was not going to stop, that we were going to march until we got uh, equality. C.C. McLean, Claude Clifford McLean, um, was the leader probably the most determined man I've ever known. If they were planning uh, some boycott or demonstration, uh, this was the, this is the place. It belittles my character. The fact that I can't walk the streets like any other man, gracefully, upright, this is absolutely a disgrace to humanity. But I know, I know, change gonna come, oh yes it will. I want to personally thank you all for being here. I want to personally thank uh, Mr. Charlie Anderson, Mr. Marbs, the Ladies Auxiliary for their sacrifice and for everybody. And having you all here means a lot. Uh, to my good friend, Mr. Nungesser, I personally want to thank you and the Lures and the Tourism for bringing this and recognizing this group, this, this brave group of African American men, the 77th Tank Battalion who fought for our country. These men fought for a country, but yet they didn't have basic civil rights here at home. These men died for freedom, but didn't have freedom or dignity at home. In the 1940s, over 500,000 soldiers trained in this area. We're proud of their sacrifices, but many black soldiers were left behind and they just weren't respected. This story tells of their sacrifice and their battles, how to change this country. Uh, on yesterday, the Lieutenant Governor and his team were at, in New Orleans recognizing those three brave girls who you saw in the video who changed, who desegregated McDowell 19 Elementary School. That's the courage that these folks fought their entire life. Also, several months ago, uh, I was with Lieutenant Governor. We went in Baton Rouge. We recognized the late A.Z. Young from that march from Bogalusa to Baton Rouge. Several months ago, he recognized the folks at Dookie Chase Restaurant. That was the meeting place in New Orleans for civil rights leaders because they were not welcome at other establishments. Jim Crow laws were so vicious, not many blacks could go to one place. I want to personally thank the Lieutenant Governor and his team. I want to thank the military, everybody who's here for making this, making this a great effort and then recon, recognizing those folks who were unforgotten. This country was built by a lot of blood and sweat but it's important they remember those soldiers, especially those African-American soldiers that gave their life. Once again, thank you and welcome. Thank you, Billy. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Camp Beauregard. Good morning. Lieutenant Governor Nungesser, elected officials, other distinguished guests, teammates and friends, thank you for joining us this morning. This is an historical day for Camp Beauregard as we celebrate the first civil rights marker to be placed within this installation. It is an extra special occasion because this day occurs during Black History Month as we honor all African American and black personnel who contributed to our nation's freedoms while struggling with adversity within American society. This marker represents the contributions of 75,000 African American and black soldiers made leading up to and during World War II at Camp Livingston, Camp Claiborne, Camp Polk, and Camp Beauregard. President Truman's executive order of 1948 officially desegregated the United States military, and today 
we still value the diversity across all branches of service and all ranks and continue to recognize the influence of people of all backgrounds. I would like to extend my personal thanks to Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, the Louisiana Department of Tourism, and our Louisiana National Guard Museum staff for making this day possible. May God bless each of you, the state of Louisiana, our United States of America, and I thank you, thank you for your time and attendance today. Safe travels and God bless. Kind of emotional for me to be very honest with you, particularly when you're leaving office and then things begin to happen like this. Uh, I know there's some things that are happening locally through some of our historic preservation society organizations and things like that so that's going to earmark some of the th some of the things that African Americans have accomplished and some of the stories to be told here locally and we really appreciate that. Let me also say this about the, and I really mean this about the Lieutenant Governor in my tenure in office, I've had the opportunity to work with him you know, through many different aspects and uh, uh, one thing I can say about him that, that he's true to his word and, and he th takes things very seriously and obviously even though this is becoming part of the Louisiana tourism or the tours, uh, rightfully so, it also uh, tell stories about Louisianians and African Americans who played a very important part here in Louisiana. And he's not been afraid to highlight those kinds of things and that I appreciate from our Lieutenant Governor and say thank you very much. I, I guess the one thing I could say very quickly is that, uh, you know, obviously this is a, uh, uh, the trail particularly, it's important here in recognizing the, um, the 761st Battalion, Tank Battalion, but what it did back in, you know, obviously, uh, uh, the wars uh, and how important it was. But there's so many others. And I say that to say this to be very short. The stories, there are many stories that can be told. There are stories that are being told now. Uh, and those stories are very important because they, they shaped America into what it is today for all of us, regardless of who we are. Uh, one thing I can tell you that the tour and the trail has already been blazed and now the stories will be told and I'll tell anybody any day the reason I have the opportunity to stand here and the reason I've had the opportunity to be able to, to serve the people of Pineville and central Louisiana and elsewhere the state of Louisiana is because those trails have already and were already blazed for me which made it easier for me. Uh, so I, I take my hats off to, to Lieutenant Governor, but in particularly and now that we can, we can all now go down that trail and take a look at the people that were so important in all of our lives and shaping our lives and shaping Louisiana and America. Uh, and I encourage you to do that. But again, thanks for the stories to be told and for the stories to come. But particularly thanks to uh, the National Guard and that tank battalion and Lieutenant Governor, I mean this from my heart. Thank you so much for standing up and uh, making this happen around the state of Louisiana. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you all for inviting us here. What a wonderful occasion to be part of. Central Louisiana has a very rich military heritage and played a most important uh, critical role during World War II specifically with the Louisiana maneuvers that most of us are very familiar with. Many people know about the famous military leaders that came through Alexandria and the, and the uh, central, uh, central area for sure, Dwight D. Eisenhower, uh, Omar Bradley, as well as General George Patton. Camp Claiborne, just south of the, of the city of Alexandria, saw a lot of action at that time. It was there about that time that the 82nd and the 101st Airborne Divisions were created. And it was there that the unit that we are honoring today, the 761st Tank Battalion, was created on April 1st, 1942. If you haven't, not familiar with the history there, we encourage you to look it up. I won't go into everything there, but certainly look it up, you'll find it very, very interesting. I encourage you to read that and uh, read all about the brave exploits of those men, for sure. You will be amazed that these soldiers, what they were able to accomplish under those conditions. Preserving or persevering and sharing, I should say, our history is critical
through our entire citizenship. That is one reason I am pleased that Lieutenant Billy Nungazzo, Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungazzo, and his team continue to work and accomplish and do what you are doing. We are truly honored to work with this and be a part of this civil rights trail to honor those who have made a difference in our entire society. We need to know about these brave men and exactly what it is that they did. And our children, as well as our grandchildren, need to understand and know about that. We must never forget the struggles of our past. We work together to build a better and a bigger future for all of us. So with that, again, I want to thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for what you're doing, what your team is doing. And uh, thank all of you all for being here today. And we uh, consider it a privilege to be here to honor the 761st Tank Battalion right here in central Louisiana. Have a great day. May God bless each and every one of you all. Thank you. What we tend to do is we like to look back at history, what, how we sit today. It's like Monday morning quarterback, and you need to look at history as it happened. Try to see what they saw, feel how they felt, understood the situation from their perspective, not us looking back. So if you look back in uh, central Louisiana, our, our country at the time, you have to think of where did we stand as a country in the early late 1930s, early 1940s? Well, we were isolationists. We, we were not pro-war, we didn't want to go to war, but as we saw uh, war taking place and evolving, we realized that we needed to get prepared for war. So Central Louisiana became one of the most predominant places for this. So to bring you back to that specific point, during the time frame, 1940 to 1941, our country was preparing for World War II. We had implemented our first peacetime draft, a peacetime, not war, peacetime and we conducted the Louisiana maneuvers. There would be a lot more than most people think. Parts of this maneuver would include two cavalry formations being pitted against one another. The first was the 1st Cavalry Division. The uh, other was the 2nd Cavalry Division. What made this unit uh, unique, it was composed of two brigades, uh, one being a white unit, the other being uh, a black unit, two, uh, two of the famous Buffalo Soldier Regiments, the 9th and 10th Cavalry, uh, were in that unit. Once war was declared, Central Louisiana would see 47 of 91 of our divisions in the Army ground forces. So way over half of the entire Army came through Central Louisiana. Uh, two of the 47 divisions that were here were the 92nd and 93rd. Both of these were Buffalo Soldier formations. Another unique organization derived from the 92nd Division was a platoon that would form the first unit in the 555th Parachute Infantry Regiment. And I know a lot of you have heard of the 506 because of the Band of Brothers. But the 505, uh, 555th got the nickname the Triple Nickel, and it was an African-American unit. That's, uh, like I said, most people are very unaware. The 93rd Division had in its order of battle a unit that gained its fame in World War I, the 369th Infantry, or the 15th New Yorker, as the Germans nicknamed them, the Harlem Hellfighters. Uh, another unit that was unique here, the 46th Artillery Brigade was stationed at Camp Livingston. It was composed of three battalions of artillery and one of anti-tank. It was also a black unit, but it was unique that it was fully motorized. Most units at this time were still horse-drawn, so we were moving forward. Two other units that had a claim to fame during this time were the 93rd and 95th General Service Regiments. These two regiments were engineer, engineer units that trained at Camp Claiborne as well. Claiborne was an engineer, uh, later became an engineer school uh, post. And they were assigned to help construct the Canadian-American uh, Highway. This was a highway that supplied our troops that were stuck up in Alaska in the Aleutians. Uh, so uh, it was an incredible undertaking there. In fact, by the end of World War II, Central Louisiana would see three division-sized units, 35 regimental-sized units, and 26 battalion size units formed and trained here. So you, you're talking about quite a bit of, of uh, uh, soldiers there, like the general alluded to, around 75,000. One of the units was the 5th Tank Group. This group was composed of three tank battalions, the 758th, the 784th, and the unit we're talking about today, the 761st. Well, the 5th Tank Group was disbanded. Three, uh, the tank battalions would serve independent of each other, as a core level asset, uh, different parts of the uh, uh, different theaters during World War II. 
While all of these performed their duty well, one stood out above the others. Constituted on 15 March 1942 and activated at Camp Claiborne on 1 April 1942, the 761st Tank Battalion would train and prepare for the 3rd Army No. 2 Louisiana Maneuvers, conducted from 12 April to 6 June 1943. So all the units that came here had their initial put together, their initial basic training style uh, uh, training, and then they would go into the maneuvers. This was what we call today uh, getting prepared for war, so we go. We would go to one of our uh, our different uh, training centers, like the National Training Center, JRTC, et cetera. The units involved were the 85th Infantry Division, the 93rd Infantry Division, the uh, 100th Infantry Battalion of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. And if that doesn't ring a bell to anybody, that is the Japanese or Nisei American soldiers, and of course the 761st Tank Battalion. After this maneuvers was conducted, they were transferred 14 September 1943 to the Tank Destroyer School at Camp Hood, Texas. So I'm thinking, I'm sure you're saying, well, why would they send tanks to a Tank Destroyer School? Well, uh, their lot at first uh, was uh, pretty miserable. They were used as the Red Force, or as we call it today, the Op 4, uh, for the rotating Tank Destroyer units going through Camp, uh, 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 camp Hood. Um, but the, the soldiers took, uh, took it and turned it around. And as all of us soldiers, or me as a former soldier and our current soldiers know, when you go to these uh, training centers, you usually lose because they're, uh, they're pretty good soldiers that you fight against and they know the terrain. And they did. They learned the hard way every day. They were repeatedly in the field. So how do you get good at something? You train. And they were training every day. So they became a very, uh, uh, very good unit. In fact, they would laugh at the tank destroyer motto uh, of seek, strike, and destroy. After they fought the 761st, they would sneak, peek, and retreat. <laughs> the image they chose for their distinguished unit insignia was the Black Panther that they saw on the tank destroyer pads. Eh? And then the motto was picked uh, by a saying from uh, boxer Joe Lewis, come out fighting. And as uh, I think it was Mayor Hall, forgive me, I can't remember now, that uh, Second Lieutenant uh, John Roosevelt Robinson, better known as Jackie Robinson, would become the famous baseball player, was assigned to the 761st at Camp Hood. Well, he was a little bit of a fish out of water. He had trained at Fort Raleigh, but not as a tanker. But he was uh, such a good soldier, and with a little bit of help from his platoon sergeant, probably a little more than he'd want to admit, but uh, he turned into an outstanding leader, and his platoon was actually recommended uh, for an award by his battalion commander. So he must have done something right somewhere. The unit was also drawing attention from leadership because of its ability. Uh, Brigadier General Dawling, the commander of the Tank Destroyer Center, was the first to notice it. He told Lieutenant General Leslie McNair, commander of Army Ground Forces. And then Lieutenant, ben, Lieutenant General Ben Lear, Army Ground Forces replacement system uh, commander in Europe. Uh, so uh, what makes these leaders significant is the manpower shortage already happening in the U.S. Army, especially with combat troops in the European theater of operation. So to their amazement, to find an independent armored battalion with over 20 months of stateside training, especially with all the maneuver training, made this unit the best trained, most capable armored battalion. They were put on alert for movement. They just didn't know if it was going to be Europe or the Pacific. They went to Europe. Its first assignment was with 12th Corps as one of the Bastard Battalions. Well, what is the Bastard Battalion? It's a unit that's assigned to the Corps headquarters. From there, they get piecemealed out to the divisions under the Corps' control. So you never knew where you were going to wind up the next day. But they uh, sucked it up and soldiered on, and, and they, they kept impressing the people that they were under. Uh, the unit was then assigned to General Patton's 3rd Army. The reporter, Tresvant Anderson, recorded what Patton said when he personally addressed the entire battalion before they went into action. Men, you are the first Negro tankers to ever fight in the American Army. I would never have asked for you if you weren't good. I have nothing but the best in my army. I don't care what color you are so long as you go up there and kill those Kraut SOBs. Everyone has their eyes on you and is expecting great things from you. 
Most of all, your race is looking forward to your success. Don't let them down. And damn it, don't let me down. 761st was assigned to the 26th ID, nicknamed the Yankee Division. This was, its first assign this was the first assignment of African American troops to a white unit. There were some growing pains, of course, and not just what you would think along racial lines. But infantry and armor, if we have some mixed in here, I know you. Uh, we speak two different languages. And uh, so they, we approach tactical problems differently. But uh, after a very short period, they worked fantastic. And as their reputation grew, more and more units would ask for them. So now I'm going to tell you the end. They would participate in four different campaigns in Europe. They were attached to two different armies and three different corps. So they were constantly being moved around. And they were also t uh, attached to numerous divisions within these units through some of the most bitterest fighting in the ETO, or the European Theater of Operations. So, if you want to learn more, I encourage you to read the 761st Independent Tank Battalion. Brothers in Arms, the epic story of the 761st Tank Battalion, World War II's Forgotten Heroes, by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Anthony Walton. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard, for that excellent presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes phase one of our ceremony. Phase two will take place at the entrance gate for the unveiling of the markers. One, two, three. Right. Can we get everybody looking right here for a second, please? Actually, when you took a look at the monument, uh, I think it's great. Uh, it's a beautiful a monument, a tribute to the 761st uh, Tank Battalion, and it also uh, reminds us of the struggles that uh, we have been through and how much uh, progress we have made. Well, sir, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed because uh, our history should and must inspire us to continue and to, to contribute something to our society. Recognizing those um, African American men and women who served, who served now, but most importantly that group who served back then in, in World War II, uh, it's it's uh, it's it's pleasing to see now it being part of the Louisiana Civil Rights Trail. The stories are starting to be told of those who were instrumental in many different aspects of life that gave us all of the opportunity as Americans that we currently have. So uh, really excited about what's happening on the tour. As a young man being in the area at the post end of the uh, Louisiana Maneuver, seeing all these soldiers that were here at the time, I didn't have a, cl have a clear understanding of what it really all meant. But uh, understanding the history now and what, uh, what ceilings were being broken, uh, it's important. And it's important that we share this with our children and our grandchildren and the younger generation because, like, I didn't really understand in the middle of it all the time that I was living here, but now that I'm an adult, and saw the importance, the motivation that it provided, and see what these people had to put up with, but yet got past it and have uh, been able to achieve success in life, in society, in this democracy that we live under. It was pretty incredible to hear the history uh, of what these men fought for our country um, under the direction of General Patton, uh, and to have this marker here and where you can click on the, the barcode and see the history that took place right here in central Louisiana will be another great marker on the Civil Rights Trail as we journey through Louisiana.